So, so let me start, you know, the last, you know, the lecture we know today. So, the title that, you know, uh, the title of my talk is the advances in the hardware and software for the quantitative, you know, spec city. So, yeah, because, you know, yeah, I think, you know, because we are more familiar with, you know, rather than the CAD, so I think <coughs> So you may have a more interest in this topic. Okay. So let me start with you know some basic you know the knowledge about you know the spectrum among dynamics. So 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 we can find you know, several you know advantages of you know, spectrum over the past scan uh, in many aspects. You know the most of all you know the the, the spectrum is more accessible than the PET scanner because you know it is you know the less expensive you know the scanner than the PET. So the usually the special scan the need you know the more lower cost than the PET scans and you know the availability of you know radio tracers are usually better than uh, the PET scan because uh, all we know, many of you know, the speculative the tracers are you know labeled with you know package 99M, so that that is a radio isotope you know produced using the, the generators. So you know there are you know the the various kind of radio speculative tracers for a wider range of you know biological process, and sometimes you know that the local production. Is you know, possible <coughs> using the, the commercial kits, as you know, Professor Yun Tang Li uh, 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 told you you know, yesterday. So this slide shows the you know, the inside of you know, gamma camera. So basically, you know, the in the gamma camera, you know, conventionally we use you know, scintillation that consists of the three major components. I mean that the the collimator uh, in front of the you know, cameras and scintillation crystal and the photomultiplier tube array here. So you know, once you know the gamma ray enters uh, into the you know the scintillation crystal through the, the collimator, the energy of you know, gamma ray is observed by the, the scintillation crystal and that is you know, converted into the, you know, the visual light. And these visual lines are uh, the collected by the, the photomultiplier tube, and using the, you know, the very similar the, you know, method that we have learned in the PET block detectors, you know, we determine the position of you know, gamma ray interactions. I mean that the, by comparing the, the out signals of these photomultiplier tubes, we calculate the position of the and okay. And we, you know, the rotate, you know, these gamma cameras and the collect the data, then apply the the image reconstruction. Actually, we can get the spect images. You know, I mean that the single photon emission, the computer tomography images. So now. Uh, <coughs> How to say most uh, now you know that the most dominant you know scanner uh, would be the you know dual head scanner. So we do you know two gamma cameras here and here. And sometimes you know that the, we use you know the triple head gamma camera for you know the high resolution images that is required for the brain or knee or something like that. 
uh, in many centers now, you know, that the spec cities are also available because you know, so uh, the, so using the you know the X-ray CT, we can get you know anatomical information that is required <coughs> for the correlation studies. Okay. <coughs> Nowadays, you know, the, the, you know, the dedicated, you know, cardiac spectra systems are widely available as well. So, you know, some of, you know, those, you know, cardiac gamma camera is, uh, cardiac dedicated gamma camera is based on the conventional the scintillation detectors, uh, as shown, you know, these two cameras. And, you know, in some cameras, you know, we use, you know, advanced, uh, CGT based, I mean that the cardio zinc telluride based in you know, the semiconductor detector. So in our center in SNU age, we have you know, two dedicated you know, cardiac spec systems. One is based on the scintillation you know, detectors, conventional scintillation detectors, and another one that is based on the cardio zinc telluride you know, semiconductor detector. Okay. Uh, yeah, one of the yeah, especially you know, that one of the reason why we use you know this dedicated you know cardiac scanner is that if we have you know sufficiently large number of patients, you know, using you know this dedicated camera so is more efficient in terms of you know patient circle and in terms of you know radiation dose to the uh, patient. And you know that we can also you know, save the much space if we use this kind of you know, small camera. But if you don't have you know, enough number of any cases for you know, cardiac studies, I think we can also consider this kind of you know, cardiac focused polymer. So, so as you know that the most conventional the polymer that we use in SPAC so is you know, the parallel polymer like that. But in the you know, cardiac focused you know, polymer, so actually you know, at the center of field of view, the polymer has a kind of, you know, the, the composing for the polymer shape, but uh, at the periphery of, you know, the, the field of view, it looks like, you know, the parallel polymer or something like that. So this is a kind of, you know, combination of the two different, you know, polymer technology that uh, using that, you know, we can achieve, you know, <laughs> in a high special resolution for the you know, cardiac visions. But uh, we don't lose, you know, the any body part in the you know, inside of you know, the image field of view. So yeah, because of that, you know, that uh, we can get the the hot images without any you know, truncation artifact or something like that. So, so I think this is a, a kind of you know possible uh, efficient way based on the conventional <coughs> camera system. So, okay. So let me tell you, you know, some current you know, advances in software side. Uh, yeah, I personally think that you know the most important you know advances in software side would be the you know use of you know the adaptive filters for the improving the you know the image quality of you know the gamma camera image and the spec. And another one would be the use of, you know, the iterative image reconstruction so based on the, the polymer detector less parts. They can improve the, the image quality, I mean, image resolution and the quantitative accuracy of the spec. Okay, so this is one of them. I mean, that the, the especially, you know, the adaptive, you know, noise reduction the filters. The conventionally, you know, that the, the noise reduction filter usually have, you know, the single, you know, the single shape of, you know, corners, I mean. So I mean that uh, usually we just use in a single corner, you know, for the you know, filtering of, you know, the whole of the, you know, the, the image field of view. But, you know, in this, you know, adaptive noise reduction filter, actually depending on the, the image property, we use, you know, variable, you know, the corner side for image filter. So, yeah, actually that is a very interesting technique because, you know, that, uh, for example, you know, that, uh, 
in this in uh, the reason reason we in you know, the uniform activity actually we we may need you know, this kind of in you know, wide corners because you know, the, the, there is no the hybrid, hybrid component I mean the, the, there is no the severe change of the uh, the image intensity but uh, actually we may not want to apply the much blurring for you know, this regions because you know, the, the, this kind of regions has you know, more detailed anatomy so in that case we just want to apply very narrow in you know, so, so depending on the, you know, this kind of you know, the image property, we can adjust the, the filtering the corner size. So, so let's you know, apply you know, the smaller corner, I mean that the, let's apply the smaller smoothing you know, to the, this kind of you know, areas with you know, anatomical details. But the, let's do you know, more the, the smoothing for those kind of you know, the uniform regions. Okay? So now you know that uh, in the advanced you know the gamma camera algorithms we use this kind of you know the adaptive you know the noise reduction you know filters. So yeah, one of you know the such example is you know the, the pixel filter so used in the Siemens camera. So the this in this you know the phantom images the left one is you know the the, you know the, the gamma camera image without applying filter, but you know that this one is the you know, filtered you know, images by applying the you know, pixel filter. So actually, you know that uh, if we apply you know, the conventional you know, the noise reduction filter with you know, wide in you know, a corner size, in most cases you know we lost you know this kind of an you know, anatomy details, but uh, because uh, you know it has a it using you know, order to be in a filter size, you know, we can reserve this kind of you know, anatomical details while we suppress the you know, noise of the, the images. Okay. So, so I think that you know most of you know the half time filter or something like that using the, the commercial cameras has uh, similar in you know, the properties of this kind of you know, anatomical filter. So. So if we apply you know, this in you know, a half time filter, actually you know we can you know we can reduce the you know the scan time or the, we can reduce the, the injection the activity to the you know, patient. So for example, you know this is the you know standard time the image that we acquired using the you know standard standard option time without applying filter, and this is the half time image. That has you know the higher level of noise than you know, these guys, but you know if we apply you know the half time filter, you know we would say that uh, this has you know quite the, the, the similar you know, noise level you know, with these guys. Yeah. So another you know the advanced technique used in the current SPECT system is you know the iterative image reconstruction. So based on the the polymeter detector response. So yeah, as you know, conventionally you know that for the SPECT we have just used you know the filtered background, the simple, most simple, simplest you know image reconstruction algorithm. But uh, now we also use in you know, the iterative you know, image reconstruction for the you know, spec as well. Uh, but uh, you know, if you are familiar with you know, the iterative reconstruction algorithms, you know, so we you may know what is in you know, the projection or the backward projection. So, yeah, but if you are not familiar with you are not going to read, you know, let me explain a little bit about you know, this question. Actually, this is quite similar to the, you know, the, the parameter estimation in the kinetic modeling. I mean that uh, we estimate, you know, the sinogram and compare it to, you know, measure the sinogram. And then using that the error between the you know, measure and estimated in you know, a sinogram, we update in you know, the image space. I mean that uh, uh, initially, you know, that uh, we assume some, you know, 
usually we assume in the uniform activity in the image space. And then based on the, the physics of spec, I mean the, the, the geometry of spec or something like that, we project you know, this data into the, the sinogram space. And then we compare this estimated you know, sinogram with you know, measure the sinogram using the you know, real spectrum machine. And then we calculate an you know, error between the this measured and estimated ones. So if you know that we have in you know, a very small error between this and these guys, it means that the we our you know, the initial guess was quite correct. So then we don't need to you know the repeat you know, this process. But uh, if if you know the error between this you know, measured and estimated data is quite high cues, you know, that uh, we need to update you know this image space. So based on that error, you know we update the image and we repeat in you know, this for the production and comparison and you know error back production. Okay? So we can update the images right now. So this is you know the you know basic idea of you know image the, the iterative image reconstruction. Yeah but the, in the conventional the image reconstruction you know for the you know this forward projection and the backward projection, we just use in you know, a line integration. So it means that you know the activity in our body is just integrated you know through the line when you <coughs> fire you know, the spectral data, the gamma camera data. So do you think that is true? Yeah, it sounds true because we use collimator. Because we use collimator, so that is basically you know, the line integration process. But you know, there is some the penetration of you know, the collimator and you know, the, the dispersion of you know, gamma ray photons, I mean the, the visible light photons inside of you know, the scintillation crystals. So actually, that is not exactly you know, line integration. Actually, I can say that. Uh, Although if you know that uh, it is line integration, if it is like just you know simple line integration, actually the point source imaging should be the point in the image space. But if we just you know measure the you know, point source data, we can see very blurred you know the data in the you know, gamma cameras. And such a blurring you know depends on the you know, distance from the surface of the camera to the you know, point source. Okay, right? So, yeah, because of that, the uh, collimator detector response, I mean that, uh, you know, the, 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 how to say, you know, that uh, uh, there is, you know, some resolution degradation in the collimator itself, and there is also some resolution degradation in the detector itself. So, by combining, you know, this resolution degradation effect, we say that is you know, the collimator you know, detector response. Okay, right? And you know, as I told you, you know, that the, if the distance between the point source and the collimator is close like that, we're going to have you know, this sharp you know, projection data. But uh, if their distance is quite far like that, we will have you know, more you know, the blood data. Like that. So, so we can incorporate this kind of you know, information the into the image reconstruction. Okay? So it means that when we obtain uh, actually you know that the, when we calculate you know this you know estimate the sinogram and when we back project this arrow into the you know, image space, we can incorporate the kind of detector response in a collimator detector response. Okay? So if we you know, incorporate that into the you know, forward projection, actually usually you know, that we will we're gonna have you know, more blood data in the side of the space. That is more realistic. That is more realistic. Because you know our data option process is not just in you know, a line integration. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, this shows you know those kind of you know the polymeter you know, detector response model procedure. 
So as I told you, you know, the special resolution of gamma camera images is dependent on the distance between the, you know, the source and the, our detector system. So, so we can model uh, such a relationship uh, as you know, this you know, linear relationship for the you know, parallel collimator. So actually, this relationship is dependent on which kind of you know, collimator that we use. But the most usually you know, in the, you know, the parallel collimator, actually special resolution is proportional to the you know, distance between the, the source and the detector. Okay, right? Uh, yeah, so you know you can see that the you know the the level of you know blurring is dependent on the distance, but the, actually this process is quite you know space the invariant in the last months. I mean that the, actually uh, it is not dependent on the you know the position, the of the the the, the point source if the distance is the same. So, because all the you know that they are in the you know different positions, because you know their distance are same, it will have the you know, same you know detector response. So we can just you know model the you know this process uh, response, uh, in this way, and we can incorporate this information into the you know image reconstruction. Okay. <coughs> so uh, this slide showed you know the effect of you know, the applying you know, such a you know, collimator detector response based image reconstruction. So, so these are the, you know, the phantom images or you know, this resolution phantom uh, that acquired you know, by applying the, the conventional the MLEM and you know, the OSM reconstruction algorithm. But this guy was reconstructed you know, using the, the collimator detector response in you know, reconstruction. So we can see that the background noise was decreased because you know, the, our estimation was you know, more correct than before, and you know that the, even we can you know, see the you know, more the, the, the you know, the hard regions the rather than you know, these conventional the image reconstruction algorithms. Uh, so actually, we can see you know, such an improvement in the clinical data as well. Actually, you know, so actually in this paper, you know, they the reported you know, such improvement in the, the resolution uh, in the clinical data. So these are the you know, bone scan data, bone spec data reconstructed using conventional filter resolution, and you know, the OSM reconstruction algorithm in which the you know, collimator detects response you know, was you know, incorporated. So I think you can appreciate you know, it has a better you know, special eligible power. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so in summary, you know that if we apply you know, this kind of uh, adaptive you know filtering method, adaptive filtering method, I mean that the adaptive corner size depending on the you know the image property. And you know the by applying the, you know, this kind of you know polymetric less pass the modeling the image reconstruction, so we can improve the resolution and we can reduce the, you know, the image noise. So this is why you know that the, if we apply you know, these data to the our clinical the techniques in you know, our clinical data, so we can reduce you know, the scan time as well. So so this uh, so these two images are from the you know, same patient. Same patient, you know, uh, but you know, uh, acquired a little bit you know, different in you know, times. But uh, actually, you know, that this was reconstructed using the conventional MLEM, but this was reconstructed using the collimated less uh, modeling based in you know, advanced uh, image reconstruction algorithm. So, yeah, actually, you know, that uh, although we the scan time was shorter in this image. So if you compare, you know, so this and you know this and you know this data, so we can appreciate that these guys has you know better contrast than the conventional the image reconstruction. Okay. So 
we can reduce noise and we, we can reduce you know, scan time, but we can have you know, better the image contrast and you know, better spatial resolution. Okay? So this is you know, another evidence. I mean that uh, this is an MDG bone scan. It constructed using conventional filter background and you know collimated response modeling. And you know that uh, so we can reduce in you know, a scan time by half by applying the you know, new the digital construction algorithms, you know, rather than the invasion of you know, filter back resolution. So I think you know these two you know new algorithms has much improved in you know, our Spectre image quality. So, so, do you have any questions about the, the soft technology? No? Okay. And let me now move to the in hardware. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, personally, I think that the, you know the detector technologies in the spec is relatively slow than past. But uh, now we have you know, the available you know, several available you know, the hardware and you know, the spectra systems. So yeah as you may know in it, the the CGT hardware and telluride is a kind of you know direct convert. I mean that the direct convert between the you know, radiation to the electrical signal. So that is different from the, the conventional scintillation detector. So we can say that the conventional scintillation detector is kind of an you know, indirect convert of radiation. I mean that the, in the scintillation detector, so radiation is converted into the visible light. And then this visible light is finally converted into the electrical signals. So actually, so this is the process in a sort of in a, a scintillation process. Yeah, but the, in the CGT, actually, you know, CGT can directly you know, convert in you know, a gamma ray into the, the electrical you know, signals because you know, in the CGT, the gamma ray you know, can make you know, electron and the hole pairs, and we collect you know, those you know, the electron and the holes. So no longer in scintillation. Uh, yeah, actually, we cannot say that is a scintigraphy because we don't use in a scintigraphy. Yeah, we are correct. <laughs> yeah, but by the way, you know that in this, you know, the advantage, yeah, most, you know, the advantage, I mean, the advantage of, you know, this version is that uh, we can have, you know, very high, very nice, you know, energy resolution because, you know, that. Uh, Number of you know, electrons that we can get in direct combustion process is much higher than you know, this indirect you know, combustion. So, so we can have you know, very uh, accurate you know, uh, energy uh, information. Yeah, by the way, you know that in this scanner, in this scanner, you know that uh, they use, actually this is a G that uh, dedicated you know, hard aspect of you know, GI scanner. So they use you know, the CGT the detector and this you know multi pinal you know collimator for you know, stationary you know, the cardiac the image. So actually we can get the dynamic you know spectral images without the you know, camera rotation so based on this you know multi pinal collimators. Okay. Yeah as I told you you know that uh, we can get you know the better the energy resolution. I mean that uh, this is in you know, energy spectrum of you know dual isotope imaging using the you know, technician 99M and 123. So this you know the the blue uh, is, uh, the sky blue is uh, energy spectrum of conventional scintillation detector. Uh, this dark blue is the energy spectrum of you know, CGT system. So, you can appreciate the CGT has in a much better the energy resolution. Okay. Yeah, so this kind of you know CGT based you know the cardiac dedicated you know, system the has in a much better performance than the conventional you know scintillation detector based in systems. So 
Yeah, so actually in this paper, you know, uh, the, he compared in a CGT based cardiac dedicated system with in a, the scintillation detector based system. So we can, if we compare you know, these numbers, you know, we can see that the CGT has you know, twice better energy resolution than the sodium iodide crystal based in a conventional system. And the spatial resolution is also you know, twice better. And uh, it has you know, six times better you know, the sensitivity. So you know, actually, you know, there is you know, high, uh, really the high advantage of this kind of system. Uh, so this is another you know, the CGT-based you know, cardiac dedicated system that we use in SNU uh, nowadays. Yeah, actually, you know, this system is very interesting. You know, the CGT-based system in which you know, multiple the parallel hole polymeter based you know, detectors are located. So actually, it rotates like a fans. Uh, to you know, acquire you know, the data with you know, the enough you know, field of view to include you know, the heart in the UVG spaces. So uh, if we use you know, this kind of you know, rotating the, the small detectors, uh, we can get uh, this stationary uh, dynamic you know, cardiac uh, images. Yeah, actually, you know, so this kind of you know, technology is you know, Possible because we use you know CGT date uh, based you know, detectors. Actually, you know, we cannot make this kind of you know compact system based on the, the, the you know scintillation detector based on angles. Yeah, so as you know, the scintillation camera based on the angles, the PMT and the angles has you know a very huge data space, huge data space you know the all of the scanner. So, based on if we make you know this kind of you know small detectors based on the conventional technology, about the half and more than half of them would be the dead space. Yeah, but uh, because we use you know direct composite method, actually we can make very compact system with you know very uh, small dead space you know around the system. I mean, the amount of yeah, by the way, you know, that, as I told you, you know, so we can acquire you know, you know, dynamic data, dynamic data, dynamic spec data. So actually in this graph, these two, the black and you know, blue curve is an you know, input function obtained from the left ventricle and the right, uh, right ventricle and the left ventricle. And this, you know, the red one is in you know, a myocardial time activity curve. So using you know this you know the time activity curves and the kinetic modeling analysis method that we have in you know, the study yesterday, actually we can calculate you know the K on value over the system. You know, so that would be you know, proportional to the you know, myocardial blood flow. So yeah, so this is you know quite you know quantitative value. Uh, value that was you know, impossible to acquire before based on the conventional you know, cameras and the expected systems. Yeah, by the way, you know, that if we the calculate this K1 value in less than the stress you know, the status, we can also you know, calculate in you know, the you know, option measure. So actually, you know, that the that will give us you know, so very useful information for the you know, diagnosis of the coronary artery distribution. Okay. Yeah, actually, you know, this you know, CGT based uh, the SPECT systems is now evolving very quickly. And so, so these two systems are you know, the CGT based in you know, a whole body, the SPECT and the SPECT CT system. So the one of them is you know provided by GHealthCare, so based on the same you know detector technology. <laughs> but there, yeah, it looks you know quite similar to the our conventional you know, 
scintillation detector based systems. And so you can see that uh, it has in a much smaller in a the gamma camera because it doesn't need, it doesn't use in a photo multiplayer cube arrays. And actually, as I told you, it has in a quite smaller in a dead space at the edge of in a, the periphery of the detector systems. So, so actually there is you know, many advantages if you know, we have you know, quite small data space around you know, the detectors. For example, you know, that, uh, we can do the, you know, the brain spectra studies, brain spectra studies with you know, very short distance between the so detectors, two detector systems. So, so when we use you know, conventional you know, dual data spec, Actually, you know, because uh, conventional systems has a you know, large data space, usually, you know, actually, we cannot you know, make the distance between two you know, gamma cameras in the shortest like that. Yeah, but uh, we can overcome that kind of you know, the shoulder problem or something like that using you know, this kind of you know, the system with you know, the minimum data space. So another very interesting, you know, whole body the spectral system is in a data spectrum, you know, various city. Actually, in which you know they use a very similar, you know, the parallel collimator based, you know, small gamma cameras. So have you seen this one? Let me show you. I'm not sure whether the the, the movie is working. This is a very interesting video. Yeah, actually, in this system, you know, that uh, it has, you know, the variable uh, radius of the, you know, the detector system. So, depending on the, you know, the, the size of the, the, the image object, you know, we can change the, you know, the distance of the, you know, the type, the radius of the you know, detectors, and we can remove, remove, you know, some of them to make the, you know, the diameter. I think we will take time. So just uh, you can just in you know, a you can just do Google you can find in you know, the very you know, the city that you can find some very interesting video that show you know how this scanner is working. Are these the detectors, these protrusions? Are these the detectors? This uh, is a baritone city, mm -hmm. this machine. Uh, the, uh, what we see like a flower like projection. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Are the detectors, but there are uh, spaces in between the detectors. So, how does it work? Oh, uh, so you know that, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you know that uh, there is some gap between the detectors. But uh, as I told you, in the cardiac systems, in you know, the inside of you know this packaging, the detector systems is rotating like that. So it covered in you know, the whole field of view. So each of them, inside of each of these. Guys, you know, detectors are rotating, like you know, the fence or something like that. So we can cover the you know, whole field of view. And actually, you know, that when they acquire the you know, whole body data, they use in you know, all of the these detectors. But the brain, for brain, you know, oh, so it seems to be the work.
I so make this you Yeah, by the way, try to find you know this video. This you know very interesting answer. So yeah. I'd like to you know, introduce this video, although I do not say this that's can't say it's not safe. Yeah. Uh, so okay. while waiting for the oh, why don't you just take this? Yeah, so if you have a question, please you know, ask me. Yeah. So it's like adjustable. When your body it goes inside, so your body is like right, right. And this is not a parallel collimator. They need use a parallel collimator. They use parallel collimator. Uh, I don't think they use a composite hole. They use just a parallel hole, but they get rotate like this. So each of them rotate like this. Is it a CGT parallel hole? Is it cheaper than the conventional one? Oh, yeah, so it has to be. Okay, let's see this one. Uh, so, uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, by the way, it is, you know, it has autostomy, you know, the radio system. Yeah, and yeah. This one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cheaper than the conventional one because it doesn't have insulation and water molecules. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I hope that it should be you know, cheaper. But the, the, they say that the, the you know the growing in you know, a CGT has you know quite lower yield. Lower yield than you know, actually sodium iodide is very cheap. Sodium iodide. Is you know, so the idea is very cheap, but uh, because you know, very limited number of you know, companies are producing you know, CGT and uh, the production yield is lower, you know, it is not cheaper, you know, it's more expensive, unfortunately. Thank you. <laughs> you can fly at all. I just have another question. Like when uh, we will be using C, uh, CT, <laughs> and uh, we will use the same dose of technician? Uh, so you know that, uh, uh, how to say, you know, the CGT, uh, uh, currently you know that uh, the CGT system, how to say, CGT is actually the current Whole body spectrum systems in a, has in a higher starting power than the conventional sodium ion. So I think that we can reduce you know, the energy. So that is a downfall of the yeah. energy. Yeah. The idea is that we can reject you know, the scatter more efficiently. So because then we will lead to very good quality. And we can also reduce the energy. Usually we can reduce the energy. Sorry. One question about the software, uh, uh, the limited image construction. Uh, how much error you normally allow? Is it on 0 or 5% or there is some kind of limit? Uh, during the program, you said error. If oh, it yeah, that, yeah. uh, how much error is allowed? That depends on. Yeah. <laughs> that depends on, you know, that's the matter of the way. Yeah. The starting, you know, starting criteria in the, the, the clinical immediate construction algorithms now is, is not an error. So we can just fix the iteration and iteration number, something number, you know, we just you know, calculate. But there's a limitation of iteration, I have to Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I just don't remember the number, but there's an optimal number of iterations, type of iteration you do. Yeah, but the more yeah, the yeah. quality falls. Yes, in the conventional, you know, OSM is because uh, because OSM is not a is not an algorithm that can guarantee the composite of the, the solution. So if we apply you know, too many iterations, you know, sometimes it goes it diverts. So yeah, so okay, yeah. so. Sometimes, uh, if you uh, say there should be none, none, none error, 
to help. So sometimes we can take long, uh, more iteration than suppose to converge. Is it like that? Or? Yeah, if you know there is no noise and uh, we, we can make with a uh, compact, you know, all the project and the so average project is possible, but the usually because of the noise and the compact, you know, the, 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 the modeling, it is very hard to get in general. Then uh, I'd like to suggest uh, who asked uh, the uh, Blood flow calculation, micellar blood flow calculation using uh, the dynamic, dynamic MIBI spec. Oh. Asthma as well. uh, Asthma, okay. But then uh, I'd like to just to ask the, the audience uh, so that uh, why because here is a correct answer. I'm, ask, uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, within, I'm going to use three minutes. Ask you, and you answer, and then he is the judge. So here, <coughs> uh, that uh, dynamic spec is just giving us uh, here input function here. 